MLB DFS picks Wednesday, June 26th, afternoon slate. Who are the pitchers that we want to roster? Who are the pitchers we want to target? We'll start with our lowest XFIP in Jack Flaherty. I don't want anything to do with Philadelphia, so I'm going to move on. Flaherty, really good in his last start, and in most of his starts. 11.6 case per nine, not walking batters, doing everything he needs to do. 218x fifth. But I don't want to mess with Philadelphia. Like eight strikeouts since last start. Next on our board, DJ Herz. ERA is a little bit higher than the X FIP. Another one of these young Nationals pitchers coming up. The future looks promising. 13.2 Ks per nine. We look at uh, his handful of starts since entering the big leagues. It's kind of, kind of a tough uh, uh, situation. You look, he had to pitch at Colorado, and that didn't go so well for him. But it wasn't terrible. Three innings pitched, three earned runs. He did have five strikeouts. The start before that, he was phenomenal. 13 Ks against Miami. And then he had a matchup against Atlanta. That's a tough matchup. And the Mets, who are really good against left-handed pitching. But overall, he's been pretty good in his 14 innings. Striking batters out. Walks are a little high. Keeping the ball in the ballpark. Uh, pretty good. I like hers. Now, the issue is San Diego has been hitting, but they're not really hitting left-handed pitching. So, you could get away with that. It depends on what his price is going to end up being. George Kirby, top of the list. We got a matchup against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, 24% K rate, 128 ISO, 297 Woba. We know the ballpark is definitely good. Uh, they have been hitting better of late, but I think that is matchup oriented. Definitely like going to Kirby in his last start. Let's see what five strikeouts, seven innings pitched. He did allow two earned runs, but those two earned runs were on solo shots. Uh, very similar, right? Kirby versus Miami in Miami. What's the difference between Kirby against Tampa at Tampa? Good fastball. Shouldn't have a problem. Tampa's not the worst against the fastball, but they are definitely below average, which is typically what we would expect from a team with a 96 WRC plus versus right-handed pitching. Next on our list, Spencer Turnbull. This is the story of the day, folks, right here. Philly at Detroit. Turnbull. Do we need to go into the entire story? So he is back in the rotation. He started the season in the rotation because Taiwan Walker was out. Taiwan Walker returned. Taiwan Walker has not been good. Taiwan Walker is now on the IL. And Turnbull's back in the rotation. He did well as a relief pitcher. Um the big story here is the revenge narrative. Always dealt with injuries at Detroit over the last couple of years. Never quite reached his potential. Even in his rookie season was like three and fourteen in his rookie season. But we see that from promising prospects. But then dealt with injuries. Never really worked out. Then he hid the injuries over the last couple of seasons. And Detroit was getting into contract disputes. DFA or you know DFA in the guy and. Him arguing like, no, that's not – like he had a, a bad falling out with Detroit and things did not go very well. Um, ultimately, he was able to sign a decent contract this season with Philadelphia and he's had a pretty good year. And now guess what, folks? He returns to Detroit just as he returns to the rotation. Numbers are solid. If you ever want to play a narrative, fire it up, get back in a team storyline – then it's going to be Spencer Turnbull on, you know, he really shouldn't have left the rotation. He was pitching really well to start the season, but Taiwan Walker came back and he got his spot back. Uh, Turnbull's been good in relief. 48 innings pitch, 10.1 case per nine. Is he going to be stretched out enough? I don't think that's going to matter in a revenge game. He is going for it. Don't need to explain Dylan Cease versus Washington. Dylan Cease is spectacular, and Washington is not. So if you can afford him, would you rather go to Cease over Kirby? We're splitting hairs. I probably am leaning Kirby. I would want to see the price, but I don't think there's much of a difference there. 
You get a little bit better of an offense in Washington, but you get a little bit more strikeout upside with Cease. Last outing, a little bit. Ten strikeouts. He did allow four in runs, but yeah, you like it. Brady Singer is right there in the elite category as well. Facing Miami, a team that we love to target. 22% K rate, not the highest, but still pretty high. 130 ISO, 287 WOBA, WRC+. Plus. Uh, it's in Kansas City, not Miami, but still a favorable pitcher's ballpark. And Singer is interesting in that he's mainly a slider sinker ball guy. He does have a fastball, but it's a kind of a, an interesting mix that makes him kind of unique. Decent case per nine, gets out of jams, gets good ground ball rate, could go very deep into this game. His last game, six strikeouts, two earned runs, six innings pitched. You know, a complete game from Singer could work. And if you look at Miami, they are not good against sliders. They are not good against sinkers. And that could be a very, I'm not going to say, he could go deep into this game. And Singer actually has been decent of late, not as good. But if you look at his matchups, he had to face the Dodgers. He had to face Cleveland. He had to face the Yankees. Much better earlier in the season. So now he's out of this tough stretch. He gets a real soft matchup against Miami. He's a unique pitcher. And then he's a sling, slider sinker ball guy mainly. Really could confuse Miami, which they're not really always that smart to begin with. So you can go in the direction. Nathan Eovaldi, really good stats on the year. Does basically everything you need from him, but uh, similar to I don't want Flaherty against Philadelphia. I don't want. I don't need to go to him facing Milwaukee in a hitter's ballpark when we've got much better elite plays. Pepio, fastball changeup guy, facing Seattle, another team that we love to pick on. Their twenty percent K rate versus right-handed pitching. Does have a bit of a home run concern issue, giving up 1.6 home runs per nine. But it is a pitcher's ballpark, so he should be able to get away with that 10.3 Ks per nine. XFIP is much better than the ERA, so he has been unfortunate. And you would think, when would that fortune turn around? When would he be on the right side? You would think it would be in a favorable matchup against Seattle. Grayson Rodriguez, I'm not going to target Cleveland, but he has been good on the season. Eight and two. Another one of those young Baltimore arms that is lifting this team forward. 320 ERA, 368 XFIP. It's just, I don't want to deal with the Guardians who are hitting pretty well and Camden Yard, although. On the year, it's not showing up as a great ballpark for hitters. We know that it actually is a pretty good ballpark for hitters. And if you look at Rodriguez's last outing, he did give up seven earned runs. But if you look closer, seven earned runs in five innings, but he struck out eight. And he pitched really well in that game, and the wheels absolutely fell off the wagon in the sixth inning. So... Still a pretty good outing overall, but, you know, they fell off and he fell off. And if you rostered him, then tough luck. You got hurt there. But I wouldn't overreact if you look at that actual game. He was pitching well and just it didn't work out. Next on our list, Ryan Feltner. This is a guy that you want to target. We got Houston facing Feltner. Feltner has been better on the road when he gets out of Colorado. 743 ERA at home, 487 on the road. That being said, you can still go after Feltner with a Houston offense that is hitting pretty well against right-hand pitching. 328 Woba, 114 WRC+, plus, not striking out. Spencer Arigetti on the other side of that. Houston, uh, he's a quality ground ball pitcher. Not great. Oh, actually, no. I'm sorry. I was getting ahead of myself looking at Colin Ray. But Spencer Arigetti He's got walk issues. I mean, he's a typical rookie development, kind of like we were talking about with Spencer Turnbull when he went 3-14 and 14 during his rookie season. We see this a lot from rookies who are great prospects, great in the minors, and then it takes them a year to two to just figure out major league hitters. And Aaron Getty is actually not the worst at the moment. Um, he's not Paul Skeens, but he's not 
three and fourteen Spencer Turnbull. He's somewhere in between, and his main problem it's the walks. Five point two walks per nine. He has tremendous strikeout upside. Ten point six Ks, but he's got to get the walks under control. Now, it is a match against Colorado, a team that can't hit, a team that strikes out a lot. And if they are free swinging, then maybe the control and the walks don't become an issue. And Arigetti could actually have himself a pretty good game. Definitely on the board based on the matchup. Normally, you're probably not that excited about a 637 ERA guy. But again, it's the walks. It's the typical rookie struggles. But occasionally, they're going to have a pretty good game. And that could be this day. Colin Ray. Texas is a team we like to pick on. Not great at hitting. But it is a hitter's ballpark. Ray has been just okay. He doesn't really strike anybody out. But he's a very solid ground ball pitcher with a decent sinker. But when we kind of look at that overall, can't even score a lot of fantasy points. Um, He could have a good day. He could have a quality start. It depends on what the pricing is going to be. Maybe you could roster him. You are taking some risk in the hitter's ballpark, although he is a pretty solid ground ball pitcher. He's not dead. He's actually kind of viable in this matchup with Texas, but it really just comes down to where you can get some cheaper arms. And we really haven't mentioned some cheap arms too much. If Maybe we can get a discount on Spencer when they release the pricing. Going down, Trevor Rogers. You're not going to roster him against Kansas City. It's just not going to happen. Uh, yeah, he's 1-8 and eight on the year, coming back from the injury. But he has been better in three of his last four starts. But in three of those last four starts, they've been really soft matchups. His velocity is probably up a tick. Or at least they're saying it is, and they think that's really going to be helpful. But I would argue that most of his improvement over the last four starts has simply just been matchup-oriented. And this is going to be a tougher matchup, so I don't think he can go to Trevor Rogers. Carlos Carrasco is 37 years old. That just hit me today. Like, what? He's 37? How did he get 37? And then you look at his stats, and like, yeah, he is. He's 37. And you never really know which Carrasco you're going to get. He is not an elite pitcher by any means anymore. And he is facing Baltimore, which means pretty much stay away. And if you get bad Carrasco, then you want to stack Baltimore. If we don't get bad Carrasco, I still don't think I want to play him. It really just comes down to, is his sinker ball working? Now, that being said, Baltimore has been below average against sinkers. So if we get a discounted Carrasco and you want to be different, maybe you go there. Andrew Abbott facing the Pittsburgh Pirates just faced them recently. It's a back-to-back, and he struck out 10. Now, that was on the road. That was in Pittsburgh. But Abbott has actually been pretty good at Cincinnati. You look at his splits, you would expect, oh, he's going to have better numbers on the road away from the hitter's ballpark. Actually, his ERA is pretty much the same. 342 ERA, XFIPS 474. There's always going to be home run issues with Abbott. Uh, The strikeouts haven't been there, but they were in the last outing against Pittsburgh, who strikes out 26% of the time against left-handed pitching. So on other slates, on other days, maybe you don't go to Abbott, but considering Pittsburgh strikes out a lot against lefties, they just struck out a bunch against him, there definitely is upside. It is risky, but then again, look at Pittsburgh, 50 WRC plus over the last week, 24% K rate. Taking a pitcher in Cincinnati, it's not quite as bad as taking a pitcher in Coors, but you know you know what you're signing up for, but there is upside. Done a great job of getting out of jams. Is eating up a lot of at innings. Abbott, inning eater. Virginia Cavaliers. Is he a sociologist? Or he's like a, almost has a PhD in something. Maybe he's a physicist. Abbott's an interesting cat. Estes. Probably want to stack against him. Low K guy. 7.8. It's actually probably, it feels like it should be lower than that. Or actually, no. 
getting ahead of myself. I'm looking at Luis Ortiz. Joey Estes, quality rookie. Again, in that category of all right, slowly figuring things out. I'm not putting together big time numbers, chewing up some innings so far. Looks halfway decent. But the problem with him is giving up home runs. And it is a good matchup where he could succeed. The Angels are not hitting well of late. They haven't hit well all year. He could shut them down. But again, he's just a quality pitcher. He's not really piling up the stats. Look at the fly ball rate. Just a 19% ground ball rate. 1.6 home runs per nine. There is a great opportunity. Maybe you're not stacking LA, but maybe you're looking for a home run there. Next guy, which when I was getting hit on myself, Luis Ortiz. Very low strikeout rate. He is a ground ball pitcher, but he gave up six runs in his last start against Tampa. He's not the worst pitcher in the world, but in Cincinnati, he just stacks Cincinnati. Last on our board, Davis Daniel projected to be called up from the minors. Very good strikeout numbers in minor league baseball. This is the majors. It's completely different. But, hey, it's Oakland, and they strike out 27% of the time. So we don't know how deep he'll go into this game. But we do have a strikeout pitcher possibly being called up, facing a team that strikes out, definitely going to be on your board. So looking over at the stacks real quick and how we would attack this. So with the Angels, in terms of Estes, he has struggled mightily with left-handed bats. So left-handed bats from Los Angeles are going to jump off. We look at Carlos Carrasco, right-handed bats are crushing him, and really even left-handed bats, but really absolutely right-handed bats. 1.9 home runs per nine to right-handed hitters. We know Baltimore has a lot of lefties, though. Uh, still fine, 360 Woba. Trevor Rogers struggling with both sides of the plate, 362 Woba to the lefties, 351 to the right side. You can go after him from any direction. Um, a lot of power. Uh, Maybe it is from the left side for Kansas City. Houston, you're looking at your left-handed bats. 392 woe, but 1.8 home runs per nine from Ryan Feltner. Now I would want to look at the splits and see how much of that is at home. But either way, lefties are, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's coarse field or not. 42% hard contact to lefties. Sign up. Where else are we seeing numbers that jump off? Uh, Grayson Rodriguez, maybe you take some of the righties from Cleveland. Brady Singer, struggling with lefties. I don't think I would go there. I guess the slider doesn't work as well against the lefties, I would imagine. I mean, the sinker should all be the same, but 379, whoa, that's pretty rough. 2.0 home runs per nine. Not really a ballpark that... Gives up a lot, but 42% hard contact. That really doesn't change my mind, though, on playing Singer. Obviously, he's allowed these numbers and still had solid numbers all throughout the season. As we go up, George Kirby, a little bit of home runs problem from the left side, but I don't think that's going to be an issue in this matchup. That'll do it. Thanks for joining me for the afternoon look. Let's get the evening video coming your way right now.